Karen from TheNeedleFelter.com. Today we're going to make a polar bear. This is the pattern that I drew for the polar bear. I elongated the neck just a little bit because I'm thinking I want to turn his head a little bit to the side. The first thing I need to do is make an armature. I'm going to use some 22 gauge cloth wrapped wire. I'm going to cut these so I have one 16 inch and one 14 inch. So I'm going to take my 14 inch wire, fold it in half, and uh, use this for the head and the front legs. And then the longer wire will be used to make the, the back and the back legs. I think of this as kind of the Serafina armature because that's where I learned it. The only change I'll make to it is I'm going to leave a little space on the back to create a hip. This is the part where I deviate just a little bit from Serafina. She tends to just bend the legs straight down like this, but I want to give the polar bear a little bit of a hip. So I'm going to bend, um, I'll actually mark it, about a half inch on either side. So I'll mark and that will just allow me to make sure that I'm leaving a little space for a hip because polar bears have kind of a wide um, wide hip and kind of back end because they have those big you know kind of massive back legs. Now that we have our armature, I think just to just so that I don't forget where the head is, I'm going to bend about one half inch, um, just to kind of reference. That's where about where that head will start. So if I hold up my sketch again, about there. Neck maybe goes up just a little bit, but we don't need to worry about that too much right now, because what we want to do next is just get this whole armature covered with core wool. So my approach to core wool is to build up the core wool to about the same size as my pattern. The outermost layer of the core wool won't be firmly felted until I add the top coat. So that outer layer will compress in a little bit more. And then when you add the top coat, it ends up being about the same size as your pattern. So since this is a smaller sculpture, I'm going to use thinner strips of core wool. And it really doesn't matter where I start. I just want to, in this case, get the whole armature covered so I have a base. I'm still trying to keep the core wool from twisting too much. I like to keep my core wool as smooth as possible. I just find it's easier to add the top coat if you do that right from the start. And I might, in this case, I'm going to use my coarser felting needle, kind of just Get that felted in really just so it doesn't unwrap too much and I'm trying not to bend my armature trying to keep the shape of the armature intact and here's the covered armature so I've got a decent sized layer of core wool over the whole piece and now what I'm going to do is just start adding little bits of core wool to build him up to match about the same size as my pattern. Another thing I'll do as I'm filling in this bear is look at reference images of real polar bears. I'm not going to make this a highly detailed piece, but I do want it to have the basic form of a real polar bear. It's good to look at different angles of the polar bear. So if you can find reference images that show them not just from the side, but from the back, from the top, from the front, so that you can see their structure and try to mimic that uh, with your wool bear. I use the core wool almost like clay. I rip off little pieces and kind of build the form by adding layers of wool rather than wrapping around the body, for instance. So I like to kind of slowly build up the form. So for instance, this polar bear's thigh is much wider than it is thick. And it would be really hard to condense down something that I had you know, wrapped around in a cylinder into that shape. So why not just start with that shape, start with it wider and you know, slowly build it up to the thickness that you need. 
I find I'm more successful if I work this way when I'm trying to replicate the, the shapes and the forms with in a real animal. And here's the finished bear's core wall. I'm pretty happy with the way it came out. It's almost the same size as the pattern, pretty close. And as I was working on it, I did consider, you know, the top, both sides, the front, the back, to make sure that I was happy with it all over. And so now we're ready for top coat. For the top coat, I'm going to use DHG, it's, that's short for Dying House Gallery, short fiber merino. This comes in a bat, and you can actually kind of pick it apart if you wanna separate layers. So what I plan to do then is to take one of those thin layers, kind of just wrap it around the polar bear in parts, and go ahead and felt it in to create his beautiful soft fur coat. So here's the bear covered in the DHG short fiber merino. This wool is perfect if you're looking for a very soft, smooth finish. You do need to use a fine gauge needle with it because the wool is so fine. So I used mostly the um, 40 and 42. I also added a tail. I made the tail first in core wool, mainly because, um, again, because this wool is so light and fluffy, it's not very good for making structural pieces, even little tiny ones like this tail. I haven't spent a lot of time on the head yet, so I think that's what I'm going to work on next, and I'm still debating how to handle the feet. I do want to keep this bear kind of simple, so I guess we'll just keep moving. I've got to make his ears. The snout, I think, is a little bit too pointy. I need to kind of square that off a little bit here, and uh, yeah, just keep moving forward. So this is where we started, and this is where we ended up. So here's my final polar bear. I do still need to kind of go over him one more time with a fine needle. He's still a little fuzzy, but overall I'm happy with the way he came out. I like the way that he's turned. He's the size that I wanted him. You can see he, he really does pretty much align with the pattern. I did have a limited amount of time that I could spend and I'm happy with what I accomplished given that constraint. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. And thanks for watching.